Hello, my name is John Lamb. I'm a senior associate in the contentious trusts and probate team with Forbes solicitors. Personal representatives are exposed to liability in several situations. In this short video, I will describe how personal representatives can protect themselves from liability. The first area of concern are claims of unknown beneficiaries or creditors. A personal representative can face a claim from an unknown beneficiary or creditor after the distribution of an estate. To protect themselves, personal representatives should always consider the statutory protection afforded to them by Section 27 of the Trustees Act 1925, by giving notice of their intention to distribute the estate, requiring any person interested to send in particulars of their claim to them within the stated time, being not less than two months from the appearance of the advertisement. The advertisement should be placed in the London Gazette, in the case of land only, in a newspaper circulating in the district where the land is situated, and any other appropriate publication. If in doubt, the personal representatives can ask the court for guidance as to where to place the advertisement. Crucially, personal representatives need to understand that they will not be protected by such an advertisement if they are aware of a potential claim rather than an actual claim. If the personal representatives are aware of a potential claim, they will need to decide how much of the estate to retain and how to explain it to the beneficiaries. If personal representatives in any way feel continuing discomfort as to their position, they can seek guidance from the court, which can set out the advertising procedures to adopt or give them leave to distribute on the basis that all of the deceased debts and liabilities have been ascertained. This protects the personal representatives from unknown debts and liabilities. It is imperative, however, for the personal representatives to understand that whilst the, the steps have a measure of protection, they do not relieve them from the necessity of making all relevant searches. Another area of potential liability for personal representatives are claims by missing beneficiaries or creditors. A Section 27 notice is of no protection where personal representatives are aware of the existence of claimants who are known but missing. To distribute the estate knowing of this situation will be a breach of duty and the personal representatives need to take all steps to safeguard their position. Firstly, they must carry out all relevant searches to trace the missing beneficiary. If they are still unable to find the beneficiary, they may be able to utilise one of a number of further options. Firstly, they could pay the amount due to the missing beneficiary or creditor into court under the provisions of the Trustee Act 1925 and then distribute the rest of the estate. Alternatively, they could apply to the court to obtain a Benjamin order, enabling them to distribute the estate on the terms set out in that order. Another option is for the personal representatives to distribute to the beneficiaries who would be entitled if the missing beneficiary had predeceased the testator, having first obtained an indemnity from the beneficiaries benefiting from that distribution to reimburse the personal representatives should the missing beneficiary subsequently turn up and demand their entitlement. This approach is, however, not, not possible where one of the beneficiaries is a minor and is highly risky, given that an indemnity may not be worth the paper it is written on. A further option for a missing, for a personal uh, representative is to obtain insurance cover against the risk of the missing beneficiary or creditor subsequently appearing and making a claim. Where that risk is not great, this may be a cheaper solution than applying for a Benjamin order. Finally, if all efforts to trace the beneficiary have failed, it may be possible for solicitors to rely on the provisions of the solicitor's accounts rules, which permits a withdrawal from a client's account of a sum that does not exceed £500. 
and payment of that sum to a charity of the solicitor's choice. Personal representatives may be met with a claim under the Inheritance Provision for Family Independence Act 1975. That claim can be brought by a number of different categories of persons who are seeking financial provision to be made for them out of the estate. In relation to claims under the Act, personal representatives are protected if they have refrained from distributing the estate for six months after the issue of the grant. Another area of concern for personal representatives is future and contingent liabilities. Where personal representatives know of a future liability, they receive no protection under Section 27 of the Trustee Act 1925. They should therefore set aside a fund to meet that future and contingent liability. When coming to a decision about the amount to be set aside, the personal representatives could seek guidance from the court. There will be occasions, however, where personal representatives have made an error and are liable to the estate and the beneficiaries. In such circumstances, there are some reliefs from the liability that might be available to them. Firstly, an executor may be able to rely on an express provision in the deceased will, providing a protection against liability for loss caused while they acted in good faith. Generally, if a beneficiary or a creditor acquiesces in a breach by the personal representatives, the court will relieve those personal representatives of any liability. Personal representatives can also be relieved of liability by the court under Section 61 of the Trustee Act 1925, if they are found to have acted honestly and reasonably and ought fairly to be excused for their breach. This is a purely discretionary relief and the key test that the court will use is whether it is fair to both the executor and to other people who might be affected to grant the relief. Each case is decided on its own facts. Broadly, it is more difficult for a, person, for a professional personal representative to obtain relief. And finally, the Limitation Act 1980 gives beneficiaries 12 years from the date of accrual to pursue a share or interest in the estate. This entitles personal representatives to defend such claims brought out of time on grounds that they are statute barred. In conclusion then, it can be seen that personal representatives have no reason to be liable for losses to the estate or to the beneficiaries. It is possible to take steps to protect themselves and to obtain relief from liability if something goes wrong. Thank you for listening.